Hey guys, it's Kraken. Welcome back to the custom card video series. Uh, next up is going to be kind of a trippy one because we have uh, Hedgehog here. Now, Hedgehog has sent us a preamble worth of custom cards. And so this video, I dedicate to him because he's really hyped for all this. And honestly, I think him being hype is making me hype. But it's not just making me hype, it's making my co-hosts hype. That would be Nabskoon! Introduce yourself. Oh, so, oh, uh, why are you speaking for me? <laughs> yeah, Isn't I'm that like our dynamic, song. lol? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh god, the big man YouTube was speaking for me. Oh, I feel so empowered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, god damn. All right, so let's let, let's take let's take care of business. Um, so could you please read this? Can you fit the hands? Uh, yeah, I gave him grapes. Um, just something you might no want to know beforehand. Okay, just fit all my ideas. Uh, character. Oh yeah, it's this again. Uh, right, 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 right. Okay, I forgot. Um, so he's got about sixty-ish okay. cards apparently. Um, yeah, this is crazy. Right. But we're just going to try and blitz through these. Um, within reason, anyway. Uh, so the cover-up stuff is just like his notes about stuff. So I think I'm just for the sake of brevity I'm not really gonna be referring to the notes very much. I'll unveil them or whatever for you the audience But I think you know, we've already got enough on our hands today. So The basking brown out grade 3 desk. So it's a grade 3 set order and it's a regalis piece So it's a set order. It's a regalis piece. That's kind of cool um, Continuous order zone nullify the con abilities of all cards and crests except basking brown out. That's Whoa, okay. Continuous order zone. The power increase from trigger units become 5,000, and at the beginning of your turn, bind this card. Okay. Oh. No, is it. So, is it called Brownout because it's a piece of shit? I'm kidding. <laughs> Hello. That, okay, here's the thing. Okay. I was about to ducky on this card, but I do dig this. And th this this <laughs> helps make it not like super duper permanent because I would have been. That would have been trippy, but basically, it looks at the uh, the G, the G stride decks and say, if you're G, play G, no crest, and your triggers are 5,000, bud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, what do you think about this one? Uh, well, let's see. It weakens the opponent's offense, but it also weakens your offense. It also nullify your con abilities and right. it's a regalis piece so you cannot even uh it's a regalis piece so you can't even run gratis deal with this thing uh, hmm i think it's interesting i don't think it's busted in any way it's got its own uh idea behind it it's kind of cool it's not that i think it's busted i'm asking what's the point well and uh... i guess the point is, I guess the point is quite clear that, you know, you nerf the uh, any decks that use crests and have con abilities, I guess. I don't know, man. Yeah. This card is weird. This card's also <laughs> interesting because if there's ever a meta where um, continuous defensive skills are a really big issue, this is a way to get around it. Like, if for whatever reason, suddenly MLB becomes something worth talking about, uh, then that could be kind of neat. I mean that that is sort of that 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 is a cool effect. Uh, it's very specific. I don't think I would play this in a deck that uses many con effects, but it's still fascinating. So yeah, that's not a, that's not a bad one. Just maybe a little bit weird to use. Um, Had Maiden's hip check is another great three set or it's another regalis piece. Okay. Had Maiden's uh, hip check. <laughs> hip check. Hey, yo, hold check. up. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> continuous in the order zone. All units gain intercept. Oh cool. boy, I can intercept with my vanguard. Um, continuous in the order zone. Your grade two units with intercept cannot be retired or bound by your opponent's card effects that did not target it. Oh, cool. okay. Well, I'm gonna assume choose, but still. When your unit intercepts, the unit gets 10,000 power. Well, 10,000 shield for that battle. Um, so one cool. really big note here. This doesn't allow units in the back row to intercept, so only your front row can intercept and they'll get 10,000 for it, but that's still cool. That is cool. Mm -hmm. Huh. It's a great uh, tree set orders. 
<laughs> you know, what, one of the things that would be cool, if you have to call trigger units, put them in the front row, and they're 25k interceptors. Hmm. That's a mm -hmm. trippy regardless piece. So... This card works in Bastion. <laughs> this card works magnificently in Bastion. I think, as a matter of fact, this would probably be the regardless piece you run in Bastion if you're not concerned about running the grade 4 fetcher. Uh... Wow, this is actually really nice. I like this. Is this just me, or is this worthy of being just a regular card as opposed to a regalis piece? Uh, well, that's this, hard. This, this card feels very practical, you know, because uh, from what we've seen so far, regalis pieces are one-offs that help uh, during a clinch situation but this isn't something that's supposed to help you in a clinch situation this is a very practical card that helps you survive the long game so oh. honestly if you slap a cost on this like a really um worth it cost like a soul bus and a discard maybe even a, a soul bus and a discard this might just be you know a regular card i don't think it should be a regalis piece funny enough i would want to counter that though because the grade four fetcher piece is not like something that's a niche situation kind of thing you can fetch any number of grade threes it's a very generically applicable consistency piece so this is a very generically applicable defensive piece right here hmm yeah. I mean, hmm. let's put it this way. Whether or not it's a regardless piece, it's still a really good effect. Um, maybe the fact that it doesn't have a cost is the reason why it is what it is. Because most regardless pieces don't really come with costs. You know, they they're kind of they kind of like to be free for the most part or very low costed. So that's another bit to it. Um, anyway, I, any final thoughts on it? Uh, let's read the notes, I guess. Notes? Uh, well, okay. Well, here's the. Uh, talking about a, a note name thing, uh, for all this piece, and this one is just de decent defensive push. Okay, cool. So, no real revelations there. Um, okay, uh, it's a grade three blitz order that's mm. a regalis piece. He's just got a lot of regalis pieces, but this appears to be the <laughs> final one. Um, okay. so it's a blitz order. Choose one of your vanguards and it gets until end of that battle. Uh, when this unit would be dealt two or more damage, it is dealt one damage instead. Wow, F you, Gravidia. You will not 16 crit me. <laughs> it is still one damage. See, now this is more what I think about is what a Regalis piece uh, should be. Like, it's very niche. It's kind of niche in a way. But it's hella but clutch. It fits. Yeah, it's hella clutch. It fits in the realm of, um, of what a, reg a Regalis piece should be. Now, on the subject of the Great Forfetcher... That, is, that feels like the opposite point of uh, Gratia's Gradale, where instead of focusing on Persona, right, it focuses on fetching green force. See, support for both sides. Both sides are the same coin. And this is very fitting uh, for what uh, a Regalis piece Blitz Order should be. Mm. Yeah, I, I will admit, this does feel way more Regalis PC, and it is a cool defensive kind of card, right? Uh, like, if you know you can take the hit, you just don't want to take two, th this is just a carte blanche, I'm only taking one damage. Would this get ran, I wonder, though, considering that it is a Regalis piece over everything else that's going around? Honestly, with the amount of drawing uh, decks, uh, uh, top 10 decks can do, including Hex Orb, I don't even run... Uh, well, I, I do run Gretius Gridale in Hex Orb, but I've never uh, used it. I never use it because Soul is so much more valuable. I mean, I guess with a mass deck, you might be inclined to use something like this, you know? You know, just have mm -hmm. this Blitz, blitz Order step in there. I feels better than Tempesphere, that's for sure. Because this is more generically applicable as a counter compared to Tempesphere, ironically enough. But that thing specifically counters the OT for the most part. Although Wait, that does have, like, shield on top of it. So, mm. What's, a uh, What's Tempesphere? Uh, well, Evergreen something. It's the, it's the one where if you're if like all the uh, units the opponent has with like 100 million plus uh power oh. it's like minus a crit or something oh you're talking about it because you said tempest free i was like isn't that the uh that's something the else. cyclone yeah. 
That's the cyclone card. <laughs> that thing is busted. Um, okay. <gasps> oh! So, a, U mm. a new UG. Love ah. letter to my heart. We are. Love letter to my heart. Let's see it. Please don't be busted. <laughs> <laughs> so, they got three effects, one of them being regarded as Eugene. So, we're off to a good start there. Um, auto on the van circle. When you play in order. Uh, ooh, it's a normal order guy. Uh, okay. Soul Blast 1, rest of rear guard, and you may play an additional order card this turn. And if it is your uh -huh. turn, uh, which it should be because you play a normal order, uh, choose one of your opponent's rear guards from retire it. Oh. Nope. No, that's busted. <laughs> oh. Nope, nope. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm a uh, cool name. I love you, Jeet, but that is busted. <laughs> I'm willing to read on. Um, act Vanguard once per turn, <laughs> but if you play the normal order this turn and your opponent's Vanguard is greater or greater, counterblast one until end of turn this unit gets during the battle that your unit attacked when your opponent would call cards from their hand to guardian circle. They must call cards equal to Whoa. or more than the number of open rear circle in the attacking unit's column plus one. Uh, Whoa. That's a power, that's a very interesting way to word a battle door whoa so eugene uh, for eugene's battle they have to call two for your regards power they have to call three nah that's busted holy shit yeah okay this i was willing to let go of but why this massive battle door holy that's, shit the, the thing about this battle door is if you had more setup and more cost, it could have potentially been like, all right, this is just the big threatening turn, and then you go from there. But it's just simple as, oh, you played an order in CB. That's too much. Uh, like, you know, if you wanted to make this a bit more applicable, you could have left it at making changing this effect. You know, you could keep the cost and the condition and all that, right? Uh, and just have mm. it be during the battle that this unit attacked is in the vanguard himself your when your opponent would guard from hand they must call cards equal to the number of open rear circle they have you know for that one I... attack it's threatening yeah no nah, this is busted man yeah. like uh what is the double best harvest is one thing but then you go and add some that kind of battle door that lasts for the rest of the turn Nah, man, that that doesn't sit right with me. I'm sorry. Mm. Another another way you could take it, because there you could play a bunch of different normal orders, right? Uh, you could also play things like a regardless piece on top of that for the turn. Mm -hmm. You know, try to search grade threes because um, there's some pretty good grade threes there. You could try to search. Uh, you could also use the uh, the persona ride one if you want, and still get to play best harvest that turn. Uh, that is pretty crazy. <laughs> So, yeah, mm -hmm. it, 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 there's a lot of comboing here. I, I feel like it's pretty close to being okay, right? Like, I think getting to play an additional order card is a little tough. But, I don't know, is it possible to make that be okay? Or do they? Or is it just not possible to let a person have it's, two orders in Dragon Empire? It's not possible. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> mm. It's it's dangerous it's really dangerous mm, like yeah. we've seen we've already seen what gandiva can do with just one best harvest right but like eugene no like this there's multiple ways you can do eugene support this shouldn't be one of them like you know something like that can bypass um what's his name something that can bypass obscadate you know something that can help eugene activate oswald uh you know to ensure that every turn mm. that should be the focus here but this mm, nah this doesn't sit right with me i'm sorry my guy so weird uh so he gave a normal slash blitz order what that that's so weird so he can be played during another player's what? turn i guess um play so oh is that why is that why you can it says you can play an additional normal order oh <laughs> and that's why if if, if it has the if it's your turn clause <laughs> okay that actually so that wasn't like a mistype he actually meant that um so you soul blast two if you have a death storm vanguard okay um you could have just name name dumped eugene himself since you went through the trouble of making him eugene uh but okay each of your opponent's units get uh minus five thousand power to end the turn 
and until the end of your opponent's next turn, get when this unit stands, he gets minus 5,000 power. Net. What the hell? Why does Eugene get that? That's not even... Rem Why do you care about reducing the power of their units? You should be retiring them. That's like a mega colony thing. Huh. I don't... Yeah, that's not that great either. Yikes. Mm, uh, you had some words here. Uh, but what about orders? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of neat, but the execution is kind of bad because it's a little... The, the balancing isn't really quite there, but even then, it doesn't really feel that much like Eugene. Like, if you changed it a little bit, it would have felt better you know that suggestion i gave earlier where it just scales the amount of open rear circles that is kind of cool uh but then you know this bit why the power reduction why isn't it something else like you could have made it like this interesting denial griffin kind of thing that as a blitz order that's eugene lock specifically and eugene locking is important the cost is good for something like eugene getting ways to use the soul because you're not really using soul anymore he doesn't have the soul blast five that was a good idea but the payoff is just not there homie it's not what it, i think really matters plus it's also pretty whack uh making them lose power like that i mean that's kind of devastating on the opponent to a degree that i don't think is really necessary okay so we have a new barrel magnus gravitational superstar sure that's actually a great name so he's also counted as Master of Gravity Barrel Magnus. Auto on van. When your rear guard or card from hand is put into your soul, this unit gets 5,000 power until end of turn, and you may soul charge one. Hmm, okay. So you have a sort of a pseudo Amandine going on here, uh, except it doesn't, it isn't based on soul charging from the deck, so it's sort of like the opposite. When you're not soul charging from like the deck, you can sort of do that. Uh, auto van once per turn. When this unit attacks, you counter blast one. And for every five cards in your soul, choose one of your rear guards and put that unit into your soul. Then, for each rear guard put into your soul by this effect, choose a card from your soul, call it to rear circle, and draw a card. If you put two in a soul, you call two to rear and draw two cards. Um. Uh. No, 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 no. That's. That's not that great. Okay, so here's the thing yeah they don't get barrel magnus's call thing and yeah they don't have the whole suck up the opponent's rears but you essentially get to plus a ton and that's kind of well then again uh because you don't you don't remove the opponent's cards now um and also you don't get the draw from barrow's effect uh barrow is scaling with 5,000 power each time you put stuff in there Actually, is that is that okay? Huh. Uh, my my co-host seems to be doing something at the moment. He'll pop back up later. So for now, it's uh, God's man doing the solo work right here. And I guess when there's only good cop, you're gonna get a, kind of a good opinion here. Hmm. So it's literally just prioritizing drop power. Okay. So what do you have to say about? I actually do want to see an explanation. Want to make a barrel magnus before you could start on and not immediately have to rush to 15. Uh, did want something that cared about putting your opponent's stuff, but I felt like that would clutter up the card too much. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That is fair. That 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 is very fair. And I think that drawing extra cards is cool for survivability and stuff. Um. You're not getting rid of the opponent's units, so that's fair. So it's it's almost as if. You basically focus on making sure you're plussing, but they're not negging. And there's not really a lot of power going on, but you still can build up soul inherently in the Vanguard, right? Uh, that, is, that is something that's very trippy, is depending on your soul count, you can build soul from rear guards, which is trippy. But uh, it's, it's not like that built, because you call a card from soul, each for each one you suck up so you're actually net neutral on the soul that you put in there but then he soul charges whenever he does that so that's where the extra soul comes from hmm, and then he gets more power yeah i think as a setup unit that is very very interesting you've given barrel magnus uh middle game uh yeah that's that's nice i will you know what i project my earlier statement this is good uh okay starfield watcher roland 
this uh unit gets 5,000 power for every two triggers in your bind so ah, it's all just just support um continue in soul drop binds uh, if you have a vanguard with all majestic card name welcome back nevs uh this unit is oh, also regarded as a grade zero tr uh critical there we go that's exactly the card that i wanted them to have i wanted them to have something that counted as a critical trigger as a normal unit that's all i wanted this is uh, perfect man that name that mean is so close to perfection <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i think the roland bin's a little weird um i don't know why it just doesn't quite sound like an alma gesture card but like still this effect works perfectly right you get to restand it with Vico mask and it'll be a pretty good beater for you and it's also crit i like it and that is mm. exactly what you want it to be uh okay so now we got another alma gesture card Alma gesture, Kichika equals Kabupi. It's, it's an Alma gesture. Uh, it's, it's got the it's, uh, it's It's Kichika Kabupi. Yeah, I forgot the equals is, <laughs> is silent. Um, so continuous in the back row center rear circle. Ooh, okay. So we got another spill incoming. Um, if your Vanguard is Ashiro Unica. Mm. Ooh, so I like that. Unica. Okay. I like that. You're, uh, your Vanguard gets auto van circle. At the end of the battle that this unit attack, counterblast one and retire your back row center rear guard. Stand this unit and it gets drive minus one until end of turn. Hmm. Uh, uh Nav, quickly, uh, is the drive until end of battle? Uh yes, but uh that's the skill isn't once per turn. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Neither is the first skill, mind you, so, well, I mean, because otherwise, you know, that skill would be completely worthless, but, um, uh, ah, <laughs> oh, crap, um, that, you know what, though, I, I will say, if you're trying to incentivize oh. Unica, and this is sort of like one of your counterpoints, giving them, giving them the ability to, giving them the ability to stand up and they lose a unit and then they do the twin drive again, um, let's see, so let, let me think about this. You're plus, mm. So you already get a plus one, but then you, so it's a net zero, but then you stand up and it's twin drive, so it's a plus two. Ooh, um, mm. you know what? If it did drive minus two, it would work. Yeah. If it did drive minus oh. two. <laughs> but Maybe, wait, what about a discard? Like just one discard? I think I, I think I would prefer the drive minus two because it's a card that punishes you for not building up the three crits, which is kind of cool. Oh, no. No, I wasn't talking uh, as in, you know, instead of this, that. No, I'm talking both. Um, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Because there's a card and it's for Eugene and it stands him up, uh, but it doesn't yeah. get rid of both the drives and it's just, you know, the discard. So it's like, bang. But yeah. The, you wanna know what else that card does? On top of the discard, it also reduces his crit to one. <laughs> yeah, but you wanna know something that Eugene can do? Eugene has more retires than this deck. And so this gives you a chance yeah. to re-abuse it. I don't know, I just feel like of course. we pick one or the no. other. We don't need to pick both. We don't need to punish Unica for that that much. It's not that I'm trying to punish her. Unica is a really strong card comparatively uh, to Eugene, although I guess I shouldn't compare them both directly. But you know, you will have the uh, opportunity to soul bust tree again, I mean, and then give all your units even more power. The so, and just one discard is being kind of generous. Honestly, because well, mm, the triple drive. Here's here's something else. I'm being uh, kind of generous. Here's something else what? that Oswald has over this. Oswald doesn't get rid of what? itself. This thing does. So you need to keep on seeing this piece, and it's not easy to recur this piece. Uh, let me think about that. Let's see. They do have the cycle card, which calls something from Soul. Mm. This thing hires itself right it doesn't put itself in a soul and that's critical and you are still having to pay a soul blast here on mm -hmm. top of that which may not always be the most manageable thing for unica you have to dedicate yourself to that kind of resourcing mm, i don't know i feel like 
just base Unica, uh, Unica has a really good attrition game. Well, yeah, but hmm. this gives it the offense bit, right? Because this helps it, like, pitch through, and we don't want to, like, hurt it too much. We want to incentivize it. I don't know. I'm just saying that I think that as long as it was either the discard or the drive minus two, then it doesn't get, like, crazy advantage. It still feels like you properly costed it. But the counterblast and retire the back row center rear guard is a... That's that in of itself is pretty damn good. That I, I do think that he made the really right call of C being it and making it getting rid of this card, but not putting it in a soul. So that was fairly intelligent. Any have you uh, do you need to think on this one for a moment, Nebs? Oh, I, I think he might have actually left. Alright, well in that case, um, you uh, you get a name mm -hmm. for this one. Uh, just give it maybe a, another minus on the drive or a discard, and you're good, buddy. But overall, really nice card. Um, Mallory Cracker. Uh, uh, what's up? No, no, I'm just. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm a bit mixed on this card. Hmm. I guess we're gonna have to agree to disagree on that one. I think that card's amazing. Um, Mallory Cracker, act once per turn on the rear circle. If your bind zone has three or more triggers, shuffle a card from your bind zone into your deck and draw a card. Ooh. Sure. Ooh. Sure, why not? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. And it's only once per turn, and you gotta keep up. No. It, da it has no power Hold to on. it, it's the only thing it does. Nah, I'm seeing something disturbing below that. <laughs> nah, what is that? Wanted to make a comment. No, not that. That's a common? That's a rare, at least. <laughs> I would have thought that'd be like a double rare, but okay. Um, Menacing nah. Poise. <laughs> yes. Herminium Mask. What is this? Ah, How? Herminium Mask. How dare Ooh. you? Ooh. How dare you, Detective DS? I am your Ooh. superior officer. <laughs> you, you know what? This is what is this? It, she he, he picked a pretty good one. She she's kind of cool. So this can only be read on a great through Herminia. Yada yada. Um, act Van right. once per turn. Uh, remove a card with Herminia and its different card name from your hand. Soul or drop. So mm, okay, cool. The remove effect is an act. That's cool. When your rear guards with the powerful ability would counterblast this turn on a circle with the dragon tree marker, reduce the cost of that oh. counterblast by one. Then choose one of your rear circles without oh. any dragon tree markers to put a dragon tree marker on it. Oh, that's interesting. So it puts the marker okay. after. That's cool. Hmm. See, I like uh, the idea, but I don't. I'm not convinced by the dragon tree marker part. Uh, as in, as in putting a dragon tree marker part. But the first part of it, that's. As a powerful player, <laughs> and fine, not intended. That's fair. I like it. It's fair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, All one right. of your key pieces is a CB two, right, man? Uh, CB two. Yeah, the CB two. Yeah. But it's uh, what do you call it? UCB. UCB when it attacks, right? Uh, mm -hmm. and one of the reasons why that card works so well is that the cb reduction happens after battle because the original herminia also needs uh no face down uh, no face up cards on top of having no soul so have, uh, being able to make good use of your cb early on and then reducing that cost by one uh to use it again is pretty good so i'm not particularly convinced about reducing the CB early, but I do like uh, that you use that particular aspect of the skill. Excellent. <laughs> cool. Uh, powerful. Auto van circle. Once per turn. It is starting to look powerful. At the end of the battle of this unit attack, if the total number of cards in your soul and face up in your damage zone is zero. What? Face up. So you've got to CB everything. That's trippy. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, the original Herminia has that condition, as I've stated. Oh, I didn't even know that, because I never play against Herminia, um, despite her being powerful. Uh, choose one of your I... rear guards with a powerful ability. Stand that unit, then discard a card from your hand, and that unit gets critical until end of turn. Hmm. Hmm. Taking the hard neck so, for the crit. So, one thing to note about this. Uh, so, the combo for the uh, Herminia, uh, Herminia deck, right? Uh, is attack with the grade 2 triple R that drive checks, CB2, the Vanguard attacks, uh, boosted by the countercharger, Herminia effect activates, 
this card restand the uh, drive checker reduce the cost by one and then use the counter charger to counter charge so when the triple drive grade two attacks you can only you only need to be cb1 and the skill can work but because this card reduces your cb cost uh during the main phase see when you got wakata blast this turn on the skill reduce the cost <gasps> wait oh that's busted I just realized this card is busted, Josh. Because uh, it reduces the CB cost by one for that entire turn, right? Yes, yes. It, it doesn't see for the next time, which means the count of, uh, the triple R only needs to CB one every time. Oh shit! Okay, I did not think this through. Oh fuck! Oh, that's busted. Mm -hmm. And the. There's also a grade one that gives something plus 5k for a CB. Oh shit. Oh, it gives the Vanguard uh, 5k for a CB. Hmm. So if so it that had card... like next time on it, would it be better? No, because then the original combo doesn't work. <sighs> I'm mixed on this. No. Okay, so I think instead of reduce uh, making the CB reduce on the first effect, I think it should search top seven for a card with a powerful ability, yeah, and then still have uh, like agreed on thing. yeah reduce reduce the cost of the CB one. Uh, that uh, reducing the cost of CB one should stick with the second effect because uh, you know they should for balancing purposes because this is busted. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that's trippy. Plus, uh, it, it's it's kind of one of the things that gets me is since you're standing that units on a rear circle, it's already got a dragon tree marker. It's already getting the extra five k continuously as well for that turn. That's uh, yeah, that's pretty wild. Um, I don't, it's I don't getting a know crit as well. Yeah, it is getting a crit, and I mean, I haven't played against powerful very much, but yeah, there there is the potential for that to get like pretty out of hand, especially if you hit the lyrical ot and then this thing is just super nuts uh you could even go the extra mile and play red ot if you hit red ot and make that thing restand again <laughs> mm. i mean it's kind of game over bro hmm uh so yeah that first effect is busted as fuck <laughs> the second effect though is pretty well done i think that's kind of cool i guess it's kind of cool i like that and uh the i mean wow. the fact that if this thing doesn't see because you can't cb anything that's and also you're just trying to you know you're just, you just use up all your resources anyway yeah that's that's nice uh it's just that yeah I, this is just this is kind of weird it reminds me of that one alessio card that says hey you always get both wings uh no you don't um, okay, so Dragon Shade Wretch uh, is oh, so it's a wretch, but he, he's he's just making wretches, it seems. But they're for lyrical, I think. Um, so this is the same. It's the Mass Fetcher Wretch, and then here is the normal lyrical wretch, as it were, the Grade One. So it has the first ability to just CB and get a marker on something that doesn't have a marker. Auto rear circle once per turn. When your other unit is placed on a Rear circle the dragon tree marker counter blast want to draw a card huh that's uh that's kind of similar to what the counter one. one is yeah like i <laughs> that feels a little uninspired uh, when you think about it you know you know what i think uh <laughs> okay now this might be busted but i think a good example of uh what the lyrical, a lyrical one should do is make a yuika that costs a CP, but it also draws you something. Oh, okay. So you're talking what uh, Laura Stride skill was, essentially. Uh, yeah, yeah, essentially like that. Yeah. So in battle, it boosted. You CP, return it, and then you draw if you return. Honestly, I kind of like that still because it's still essentially a CP for the draw, but the bounce aspect is very lyrical in nature. I mean, if we can allow Yuika to do, it doesn't get the draw, but it's still Soul Blast to bounce and it has power to. Like this doesn't have power to. I think it works. That's pretty fine. 
Uh, yeah, uh, that'd be, but so, but this is just a little bit uninspired, but technically compared to what we're suggesting, this is a little underpowered, but like, eh, it's just more about the, the flavor aspect of it, but it's, it, it's fine as it is, I guess. Youth Brick Revolt Prism. What? What? Um, wait. So oh, no. No. Hold on. I've, I'm seeing something, but it says hand. Hand. <laughs> uh, is it is it time for Duke Reverse? Or Dupe, I should say. At the end of the battle that your Vanguard revolt form in its name, attack to greet through your greater Vanguard. Okay, you're doing fine so far. Counterblast 1. Okay. Ride this card as stand and it gets drive minus 2 until end of turn. And this unit is regarded as being placed by the Revolve Dress ability. At the end of your turn, choose a card from your soul with the Revolve Dress ability and... Write it as rest. When this unit's placed on Van Circle, Soul Blast up to three cards and activate the below effects according to the number, uh, according to the card of Soul Blast for this cost. So if you Soul Blast a Zest, it gets 2,000 oh, no. card critical. If you Soul Blast a Gus, it gets a drive. And if you Soul Blast oh. a Tempest, you bot deck one of the opponent's units, but you don't get the Tempest at two. Ah! Oh. So you get, yeah, but like, like that doesn't matter. Effects. Hold on, it kind of does uh, the Tempest effect kind of doesn't matter because this thing... Uh... Wait... Hold on, I misread it. <laughs> Never right. mind. So, unless you play Zest, this thing doesn't even have any power gain to it. Trip out. Yeah, but it's the, it's the third Vanguard attacker that turn. Yeah, it's the third Vanguard attack, but... So, unless you're and, doing... Which that? means... Dole Break activates again. But Dole Break has to... Well, I mean, I guess Dole Break activates again to give it, like, a little bit of power. And I guess Schneisel could also give it a power if you haven't used Schneisel yet. So you give it a little bit of power, but it doesn't have, like, already the power that the other three was bringing to the table. Unless you're doing Zest, which that's just kind of the unpopular one. Um, but mm. then, so... It makes sense. I, 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 this kind of, this kind of makes sense though. I mean, and the fact that Gust gives you the drive plus one, this, like, honestly, Gust is the best one, uh, because mm -hmm. Gust just, you don't need to discard for this drive. That, that actually kind of feels a little bit superior to Gust, man. That's crazy. Although I guess yeah. your quote on quote discard is, you know, writing this thing from hand, but at the same time, it's an extra attack uh, in CB. But then again, I guess you could also argue that there is a CB here for it. Um, it's powerful. It's a little bit above the average. But then again, for what Youthberg is, this isn't too beyond the pale. Um, and I I like it. Yeah, it's I got honestly good really like it. Stuff. I re what I really appreciate about this is twofold. One thing I really appreciate about this is because it doesn't have inherent power gain stuff, you're relying on one of two ways to do it. You're rather relying on your ears to give you your rears to give you some good power gain stuff. And I think spill is once per turn, right? Um she is not. Okay, so this is regarded as being by the revolve just ability. So you're relying on things like spill or whatever to give you some strong boosting, which okay, fine. Uh, but it's still, you know. If you want power, you'd have to play the Zest, you know, the power and the crit, and I think this makes Zest feel a lot more appealing. Um, mm -hmm. But also, what he kept with Tempest was the rear guard bot decking effect. That's cool. But he made That's it a really bit powerful. Yeah, he made it stronger because you choose. It doesn't matter about the grade or anything. You choose. That That's neat. Wow, man. Uh, this is even considered a, potentially a little bit more powerful because you'll need the Persona Ride for the crit. It's a little bit less in the power aspect, but you still get the crit. Um, huh. But mm. for for a card that can push, that could push to the next level, man, that's powerful, but I, I like it. This is kind of awesome. Man, all right. Rock on, dude. Uh, okay, so the stuff below is a part of an idea I have for every nation having insect theme, whatever. Uh, moths, tarantulas, beetle mantis, waspy. Uh, are you a mega colony guy? Because this certainly seems like the idea of a mega colony guy, so that's neat. Um, okay, so Stoicay had, you know, bug grade zero. We wrote upon, so I can draw a card. Yeah, just what a standard starter does. So. Grade 1 of the Stoicaea Insect Ride line is when it's placed on Van Circle, each player puts the top card of their deck into their drop. If a trigger unit or order card was put into the drop by this effect, you may draw a card. Hmm. Alright, solid. Okay. 
when the an auto when this unit is chosen by your vanguard's ability or boost your grade three vanguard i think he meant to put a rear circle here um put the top card of your opponent's deck into their drop okay mm. okay one little quick thing i think instead of saying if a trigger unit or order card is put i think it should say if a non-trigger uh unit card was uh put because normal orders and you shouldn't your reward for um you shouldn't be awarded for milling the opponent's trigger that should be the reward it's uh, uh so if you yeah so if, if you mill a normal unit or order card you should uh, draw instead of milling a trigger unit it's that premise we bring up sometimes the rich rich the rich get richer thing you know where yeah. we don't want favorable outcomes to lead to more favorable outcomes because these kind of effects should be more compensation than uh just dugging on the opponent but you know that's just the way we've been thinking about it anyway so uh the grade two um wow this grade two's got some effects uh soul blast one as a vanguard so this is obviously the right line um each player chooses one grade one or less unit from their drop and calls to their back row center rear circles rest if your opponent did not call a card and you rode uh from the grade one you may draw a card okay oh. hmm uh auto on the van or rear when this unit attacks a vanguard stand up to one of your opponent's rear guards in the same all them as this unit if you stood a unit this unit gets 5,000 power to end a turn if no card was stood discard a card from your hand choose up to one grade two blitz or in your drop and put in your hand um whoa that's neat that's trippy <laughs> okay huh all right uh mm -hmm. Triarch, uh, so this is the grade three uh, boss. It's got two effects, and oh my god, it's got a whole ass note for it. Um, act on the van circle once per turn. Use Soul Blast two uh, to choose a grade two or less unit from each player's drop, and that card's owner calls it to an open rear circle of stand. Any unit called by this ability is regarded as your unit during this call. You may choose to activate any auto abilities as if they were your own. You still have to meet the requirements and pay the cost yourself, so like dominate. Uh, auto on the van circle. When this unit attacks, counterblast one, and for each rear guard in the back row add stand with boost. Boost this unit as if able and are treated as if they were your units for that battle. So you're kind of Leonorning with the opponent. Um, at the end of that battle, wow. for every two units that boosted this unit, soul charge one and choose one of your opponent's back row rear guards, and that unit cannot attack or boost against this unit during your opponent's next turn. So there's a little mm. bit of, uh, there's some problem solving card text here. Your opponent's units that boost your vanguard uh, will count towards the total number of times your units boosted this turn. Any abilities of your opponent's units that boost that this unit for that battle, yours to use, again, if you meet cost and conditions and all that. Um, Huh. Uh, mm. That's kind of trippy. I don't know about that soul charge part though. That shouldn't be part of the card. That should be part of the support. But other than that, that's pretty neat. <laughs> I like it. Uh, it's the the cool thing about this is it's like Leonorn, but Mega Colony in a sense because you do get the multi boosting. But rather than having the extra drive for more pressure or whatever, you sort of have this odd and flavorful stunning right where you use them at, like you brainwash them to do your bidding and then they can't really go against you when it's the opponent's turn so your opponent's left with these not really useless units they could still go on the rear guards and stuff but they're not going to do the thing that you probably want them to do uh that's fascinating okay so it's got uh some support cards during your turn if it's got the well this is the archetype name um, if your vanguard has that name, uh, each other in the same unit, okay. In its card name, each other unit in the same column as this unit gets 3,000 power and boosts, okay? So the other unit gets 3k and boost. When this unit attacks a vanguard, if you boosted a total of five or more times this turn, it's soul blast one and you may draw a card. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, you, so, oh, right, right. You're giving other things boost because if you don't have, a, like, a lot of boosters, you can just panic boost with a grade two or higher. I do like that effect. The fact that you can soul blast but may draw a card, that, uh, that's kind of funny. Why did you, well, I wonder why they gave it the, 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 uh, the Fujin Lean clause. I don't know. Like, 
it's it's not even necessary because costs are optional yeah right uh that's trippy i guess unless like the only way i could see this being good is if you wanted to pay the cost but like like the cost is the important part but that's not really the case here soul is supposed to be something that you use as your main cost but you'll you pay it to play good effects so there's no point paying them in of themselves right uh invitational dude so okay it's a great one support when it's placed on rear circle you can't replace <laughs> one choose an opponent's rear guard circle then mm -hmm. choose one unit from your opponent's drop a grade less than or equal to your opponent's vanguard and call it to the chosen rear circle stand if your opponent has three or more back row rear guards you may draw a card okay now that makes sense <laughs> yeah. that makes sense the draw okay so a Phenopede is really cool i really like him <laughs> a Phenopede is really cool yeah the Phenopede archetype so far seems to be really well done um a phenopede to watch uh it's a grade three rear um when this unit is placed on advanced circle you soul blast one search your deck for up to one blitz order without regardless piece but uh reveal it put your right. hand shelf your deck Ooh. all okay. right uh auto van circle when uh, this unit attacks counter blast soul blast so more soul blasting costs uh so that must be why this, this vanguard soul charges because you're just soul blasting even more christ uh, well, well, I mean, what do you call it? This is a Vanguard. This is a second Vanguard. Wait, this is why is this a, whoa? You're right. This is a Vanguard. I didn't even I didn't even process that together when I was reading it off. Okay, so let's see. Choose one one card from your opponent's drop with grade less than or equal to your opponent's Vanguard and call it to your rear circle stand. Um, at the end of the turn, put the called card to the bottom of its owner's deck and you may draw a card. Huh. Okay. Hmm. Kind of. So you steal one of their units and then you replace it with a draw afterwards, but you still kind of get to field their unit. That's for the for cost of uses. That's that's pretty cool and fair. Um, continuous. When you play a Blitz Order without regardless piece or Sentinel, uh, put that card into your soul. If you put, you may play an additional order this turn with a different card name than a Blitz Order you played this turn. So you get the Blitz Order twice, but you can't use the same Blitz Order. Hmm. Uh. I mean. Okay. Hmm. This one's weird. I don't know why we needed the secondary Vanguard. It's trippy, because this is the D-series thing, right? Hmm. Okay. I think so. Uh, moving on. So, Surprise Affinipede is a grade 1 with 7,000 power. Okay. Uh, auto on the drop. When you play your first Blitz Order this turn, you may call this unit from your soul to rear circle as rest, and it gains intercept until end of turn. Okay. <clears throat> This unit gets a uh, shield plus 5,000 for every two blitz order in your soul and drop. When did the blitz order start popping up, man? <laughs> well, they've, uh, they've taken a huge focus on blitz orders in recent, uh, in set 11. And again, I really like that because up until like this set, I've never felt the need to play blitz orders outside of elementary of course but blitz orders always felt so needless like uh I, and i guess that's why she uh <laughs> that's why people always complain about defensive values so you know this in a way um uh, meets uh people uh, this is basically bushiro uh, bushiro's attempt at meeting people halfway through defensive power creep is uh can go haywire in d series mm, but with fair. this particular focus on blitz orders they're basically saying i you know like if you want defensive powers we uh will give it to you but it's not generic in any way uh, it's something that you have to work towards and you know and with this uh particular series in mind it, with this guy's cards in mind it's a great way it's a good way, at least, to expand on what Bushiroad is trying to build up to. Hmm. Yeah, that is a fair point. They have been doing a lot of Blitz Order stuff lately, and I guess that's their address to the current state of the game and where power keeps it going. Uh, <clears throat> act on a rear circle. If your Vanguard has a Finipede in its card name, your opponent's Vanguard has one or more card names. Uh, put this unit in your soul. Choose one of your opponent's Vanguards. Th that unit loses all of its names. Your Vanguard gets each of that unit's different names. Whoa, that's true. Whoa. Uh... Uh, that's very much a Baker Colony as kind of effect in its own weird way. Um, continuous mm -hmm. on re rear circle. If your opponent's Vanguard 
less than one card name. So if it has no card names, it's going to get 5,000 power for each of your Vanguard's different card names. That's a fascinating <laughs> name. Oh, this is kind of a neat flavor text. I just noticed this. And with that, you're now for a limited time. <laughs> Looks at notes. One Miss Fortia. <laughs> that is hilarious. That's funny. Holy like, shit, that is fucking hilarious. Just put, uh, just put a sticky note saying, I'm Bastion. <laughs> I like how they they bother to giving an AK power to... <laughs> right, right. This one gets the AK I also... power. Because, yeah, I mean, it's going to go into the soul anyway, right? But then it becomes a 13k, or, like, at base, and then goes up from there. That's a cool number. Also, also fun fact, uh, there is a Nubatama card that actually gives... Um, your vanguard all of the opponent's vanguards formation uh it's stealth dragon tenrai tenrai it's the like one that? that lets you play uh, Zer different xeroth dragons from different nations because you just take whatever <laughs> nation the opponent has bruh i don't think <laughs> i think their deck building rules kind of prohibits that <laughs> well i'm gonna ask mr mr vanguard insider he was talking about that card um what the heck? Yeah, I don't. Hey, look, it's just off my memory. I don't. I thought it wouldn't have worked either, but I, I guess you can put it in the cheese zone or something. I don't know what it was up with that. Uh, Assaging embrace. Uh, you need to, if I remember correctly, you need to have neon easy as your starter uh, to be able to do that. Hmm. Uh, so it, this is a great two blitz order. You may play this card with Soul Blast One if you got an affinity. Your Vanguard gets minus ten thousand power and minus critical one for that for that battle so your vanguard gets it then for each of your opponents attacking units okay then each of your opponents attacking unit gets critical minus one until end of that battle if your vanguard has troy arc in its card name the chosen unit gets critical minus two uh huh what am i not understanding about this what's the chosen unit vanguard gets then each of your opponents attacking unit gets vanguard's going to choose the unit so essentially, it's just saying the the chosen units are uh, the opponent's attacking units. Oh. They uh, they they were the for some weird reason this guy is using uh, V series wording. Uh, yeah, no, D series always specifies. Oh, you have to choose. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's trippy. I actually got an argument with the guy earlier today about that about wording. It's like, oh, does it assume the opponent? Like, no, it assumes you, dude. Um, so, <laughs> okay, I think I understand it, huh? Well, considering it's just for the battle, that's a very trippy but kind of nice defensive skill. It kind of reminds me of that one di uh, g garb we got recently, the one that like minus his crits or whatever. Yep. Uh, Grand Blue and Genesis also did that. Oh yeah, yeah, it did. <laughs> Uh, Signal Protect is a great three blitz order. Play this card with Counter Blast One, Soul Blast One. If you have a Tree Arc or Durach in its name, um, choose one of your opponent's rested rear guards in the back row that is not attacking. Move that unit to Guardian Circle, uh, and it gets Shield plus ten thousand power for that barrel. So you kind of have a Gahorakon going on here. If your Vanguard has Durach in its card name, your your opponent's Vanguard gets Drive minus one until end of turn. And when the chosen cards regard from Guardian Circle, put on the bottom of the deck instead of the drop. Uh, what? So you can minus drive Big mini. That is pretty Big mean. mini. <laughs> but <laughs> I will admit, for a grade three blitz order, that is kind of cool. <laughs> huh. Big mini. Uh, uh, can't shoot right. minus drive like that? I guess. Uh, I mean. Hmm. Ooh, that's that's rough on the opponent. Uh, imagine playing this, and the opponent had like a restanding that unit that already minus itself a drive. So doing this, they just don't drive. <laughs> that would be crazy. Uh, so Nolichi Nibliard is another great three blitz order. It's a regalus piece. Oh boy, we're back to this. Play this week's Soul Blast one. Okay. Discard a card from your hand. Oh man, this one's got a cost. Until end of turn. Units on Van Circle, and it's a blitz, okay. Units on Van Circle lose all their names, and if an opponent Persona wrote this turn, deactivate Persona Ride. <laughs> big mini. Big, big. big Okay, mini. okay. It's a regardless piece that has this crazy cost to it, but I think for all that, this is worth it. Th this would actually this, be a regardless piece uh, that people would play. This does feel like a regardless piece uh, blitz order, at least. Yeah. That, that is a crazy shutdown card, man. Oh god, that would be so annoying though to have the opponent play that. But you are getting rid of two cards from your hand to do it, right? Um, and even though they deactivate Persona, right? They don't 
stop your uh they don't stop your draw it's not like you have to give up your draw and it's like you're forced to pay your taxes put that to the back of the deck right um no 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 <laughs> so it's just the ten thousand power thing and the it says deactivate persona right but does that mean that you no longer qualify as being persona road this turn because if you still qualify as having persona road you can still use the persona road locked effects like with uh avant-garda I think that's how that works, right? Or is it that because yeah. because they measure still persona road, thing, right? Yeah, you still persona road. I think a much more efficient way to this uh, to do this card is to just say all of your opponent's units get minus ten k. Well, all of your opponent's opponent. units in the front row, I guess. Front row, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just get minus ten k. Yeah, yeah, that would be more efficient because that's really all you're doing. But still, the the concept here and it's it still executed pretty brilliantly. I like this. That that's a cool card. So far, this guy's actually been pretty nice with the quality um okay so yeah. grade three normal order uh regardless piece play this if your opponent's vanguard is grade three or grade eight okay um until your next turn you get at the beginning of the battle phase each player chooses their vanguard and three rear cards and until end of turn only the chosen units may attack or be attacked huh neat uh well Wait, if you choose three rear guards, the only the chosen units may attack or be attacked. But wait, what's the point of that though? Because it wouldn't. Because if the opponent only has two front row units, you know. Funnily enough, this uh, this regardless piece, I I think I would see being played more um, in premium because that's how you can really cut Excel decks. Mm -hmm. This it's basically just a way of saying, oh, your opponent is. You know, <laughs> your opponent is trying to play Vermilion. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that is kind of funny. Um, all right. Yeah, and I guess also there's it, uh, uh, Clarissa as well can get kind of cuckdy duckdy by this. Honestly, the this card is weird in a sense because like what do you call it? It's a way of protecting only your front row rear guards, and I feel. That that's not a very efficient regalis piece. Yeah, it's not. This was a Nova Grappler order. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know either, bro. I don't know I'm either. Fine. Dragonflies for like low hanging fruit. So okay, yeah, this is Dragon Empire stuff. Focus on volcano set order, which is all about accumulating pressure or erupting set volcano. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> so here's the volcano set order in question. It's the Ember Scale Peak. This you this card cannot be played from your hand. <laughs> Damn. Pressure. This card style said zero pressure. Oh, are we trying to recreate the uh, the sanctuary card that we were so fond of? Auto in the order zone. When your normal you unit is down for your card's cost, uh, increase the pressure of this card by one. Oh god, no, uh -oh. no, no, Activate no, no. Erupt this volcano for cost. Remove one or more pressure from this card, and this volcano's eruption size for the turn and effects below is according to some of the pressure removed from this card. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? My guy, my guy, are you a build divide player? <laughs> trippy right this actually does remind me of um what was that uh like it was like a geyser card in build divide yeah that's what it felt like yeah right? yeah there, there was yeah. that one <laughs> um man the fact that we're even doing build divide references is kind of neat forgot I, I forgot you did know about that game uh three or more choose one of your opponent's rear guards to retire it okay uh you may counter charge or soul charge one okay Put one card from your bind zone on the bottom of your deck for nine or more pressure. Um, twelve or more. Activate Persona Ride. Oh wow! Whoa, trippy. So you can activate Persona Ride for, uh, but you have to get rid of pressure, and it does have the good clause that you kind of remove the pressure. But you see, it's only when you bind a normal unit for your card's cost. So it's very specific. It's not anything bound. It's not by any binding. You must specifically bind for your cost. Uh, okay. This doesn't seem that bad. Uh, so now let's go mm -hmm. on to the ride line. Stoker of the Empress. Um, when wrote upon. Okay, so it's just the grade zero skill. Uh, when this unit is placed by riding from the grade zero starter, search your hand or deck for one Ember Scale Peak and put in your order zone face down. And if you search your deck, shuffle it face down. Oh, so this volcano uh. isn't even, uh, it, it hasn't even rose yet. Hmm. 
Uh, mm. Continuous on the van circle. If you have a face down card in your order zone, when you would ride from your deck, instead of discard one card from your hand, you may instead put two cards from the top of your deck into your drop. Hmm. Uh, when, okay. And when rode upon by a grade three, Soul Blast this card. Choose a face down card in your order zone. Turn it face up, and if it's a volcano, because what the hell else would it be? Uh, increases its pressure by two. Okay. Mm. All right. All um, right. So okay. Um, Ember Scale Chronicler of the Ashen Fable. Wow, nice name. Um, this is your Grade Three Vanguard. Act Vanguard Circle once per turn. Find a normal unit from your drop. Two of your rear guards gain insect. <laughs> oh, sure. Then for every two of your insect units, increase the pressure of your volcano by one. Includes this unit. Uh, so you bind. What a is wrong card. with you? So what is wrong with you? <laughs> That's kind of cheap, though. So essentially, just by by having a full field, this gives you four, because you've also bound a normal unit from your drop zone. What? Ah, uh, man, you uh, you uh, mm, you uh, wild. you're a you're a nice guy, <laughs> Wiley. <laughs> mm, okay. Uh, I'll say what I actually meant. What kind of shit is this? <laughs> That, what shit is this, bro? <laughs> why does it build like that, man? It like I feel like this cost is correct, but your effect is not correct. <laughs> it's weird. Auto on the van circle. When your volcano erupts, okay, if the size of the eruption was three or greater, because why would it not be the size? The size has to be three or greater. You you erupt, you only start getting effects when you have three or more that you remove. So like, it's I guess. Oh wait, I guess the reason why he's doing this, in fairness, is so the opponent doesn't go. Hoo, hoo, I erupt for one, and now my vanguard skill procs. So it has to. He he's saying you have to play it honestly. Okay, fine. I guess until the end of your opponent's next turn, this unit gets continuous on van. Your insect cards get shield plus five thousand power. Okay. Um, auto on Van Circle. When this unit attacks, if the size of your eruption was six or greater, um, cost Counter Blast one and Soul Blast to reveal the bottom card of your deck, and if it's a normal unit, you may call that card to rear circle. If you did not call, return to its normal. There's okay, okay. I will admit that's a sick effect, but like with a couple of other effects here, why is it here? What's the concept? It's like literally, if your volcano go boom, you do thing. Like, um, I'm not as sold on this one. The other one actually had like more coherent shenanigans. This one does a bit too much already. Um, okay, so this is a grade three rear, and uh, yeah, it's, it's one's actually a grade three rear support. When it's placed on rear circle, you counter blast one and put a normal unit from your bind zone on the bottom of your deck. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards with grade equal to the card put for this cost for that unit. Okay, that's pretty cool. This unit attacks. If the size of your eruptions turn was three or greater, uh, for that battle, this unit gets power plus five thousand power. Okay. Um. Mm hmm. Now, Ember Skill Fanatic Uranos. It's another rear guard grade three. When your volcano erupts, it gains two thousand power until end of turn, according to the size of the eruption. So, if it was six or greater, this unit gets. <sighs> Ooh, now that's a beater. But <sighs> wait, hold on a second. That means it gets twenty-four thousand power when you're up for twelve. You've also activated Persona Ride. I don't know. I feel like it should be 1,000 power, man. That would probably be more accurate, because 24,000 power, really, for free? Mm. Um, but it is kind of a cool effect, but we could do it more the Coach No Highway, man. Uh, continuous in the rear circle. During the battle, this unit attacked. If the size of your eruption this turn was 9 or greater, when your opponent would call cards from the hand of Guardian Circle, they must call two or more at the same time, and at the end of the battle, retire this unit. Oh, so you battle door, but it gets rid of itself afterwards. Uh, honestly, considering there's not a lot of recursion going on here from the drop zone, I'd say this is actually fine. Um, it kind of reminds me of, uh, what's his name? He's the, he was with Nebula Lord in the V series remake. Um, he, ha he would bind himself if you use his battle door effect. Uh, God, I can't remember his name. I think it started with an R. Um, not Rubidium, it was something. Uh, I might remember it later randomly. Okay, so this is a grade two rear support. If your volcano erupted this turn, soul blast one or bind this unit, reveal two cards from the bottom of your deck, put up to one reveal card in your hand, put the rest in your drop. Hmm, 
uh, the fact that Soul Blast or Bind is bad because you're already plusing one for just a Soul Blast, Soul Blast that's a bit above the norm. But also binding it, it means that it's a break even. Don't get me wrong, but you're also you're also able to just accelerate binds this way during the main phase, so you can still do Volcano Shenanigans that turn. Um, so I think the bind here is correct, but not to just plus it back that way. Ah, yeah, that's. That's a little weird. Like, I, I think even if you were to keep this, I wouldn't have so much problems. The fact that you have the Soul Blast as an alternative condition, it shouldn't be able to do one or the other. Should You should stick to one and not have it be the Soul Blast. Make it a Counter Blast instead. Okay. So, Ember Scale Celebrant, when this unit attacks or the attack it boosted hits, if the size of your eruption was three or greater, bind this unit and Soul Charge one. See, that's better, right? You know, you have to do the binding, but you do get a benefit for it. Uh... Ember Wing Moth. When this unit is bound for your card's cost, choose one of your rear guards out any equipped gauges and put this. Uh, Why does it have gauges? Continuous as an equipped gauge? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even that doesn't even work because the equipped gauges are face down. <laughs> Where even... this card is face up. Ah, oh, the equipped unit gets three thousand power, five thousand. How are you turning? Gains... How are you turning that face up? Equipped gauges are fundamentally just face down. God. How? Look, I'm gonna make a random prediction that this next card is gonna dominate the opponent's unit. Uh, God. Okay. So okay. Engorged. A gorgeous <laughs> <laughs> At this point, why not? Um, act on the rear circle once per turn. If you have a card in your order zone, Soul Blast and bind a normal unit from your drop. Choose a card from your drop with grade less, uh, grade equal to or less than the card bound for this cost. Other than this thing, call it your rear circle and may have a gain insect. This unit, if you did not gain insect, that unit cannot gain insect on a turn. Um, why would you not give it insect? Uh, but also, uh, here's the problem. Um. Why is this a Soul Blast for a plus one? That's too easy. Uh, auto and Rear Circle, I, when you- Not only does it plus you one, it also increases your pressure. <laughs> and it increases, yeah, it increases your pressure, bro. In both ways, it increases your offensive pressure because you're actually boarding something of your choice. And you also increase your volcano's pressure um, to do random stuff. Uh, auto on the Rear Circle, when your unit is called from your drop, <laughs> If you're pr if the pressure of your volcano is six or greater, this unit gets five thousand power and a turn. Okay, fine. Uh, Lord of the Magma Vault Tau Mothrox. I felt like reading that name because it actually looks cool. Um, get you this on Van Circle. You can only ride Earth Dragon cards. <laughs> okay, get you this on Van Circle. The size of your eruption cannot be greater than three. Excuse me. Auto on Van Circle. When you retire a rear guard for your card's cost, increase the pressure of your volcano by one. If it was okay. retired during your main phase and you have not countercharged, you may countercharge. Uh, when this unit okay. attacks, counterblast will retire a rear, which uh, then procs this to increase pressure by one, and then uh, but it's not during the main phase, so you don't countercharge. Increase the pressure of your volcano by one for each of your retired rear guard grades. Then, if this unit. Then this unit gets power plus 3,000 in turn for each pressure of your volcano. If it got 36,000 or more, it gets critical plus one for that bow. How are you doing it if the size of your eruption cannot be greater than three? What? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> this is... Uh... I, this card is fundamentally <laughs> flawed. It, it, it doesn't even... I don't. I think it just like cucked its own self. What? I, I need to read this volcano again, man. Maybe I'm un misunderstanding yeah. something here. Um, it's uh, so essentially what it's saying is that whenever you are trying to activate this card, you are locked to the first effect, which means you can only retire your stuff. <laughs> so uh, there's probably going to be more bosses because this guy likes doing multiple bosses for the same sub clan. Oh, wait. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. It's not. I get it now because it's for each pressure of volcano. So the eruption is how many you use up, but it doesn't count for how much pressure you have. So if you build up a lot of, you can build yeah. up a lot of pressure, but just not you. But you're gonna do small eruptions. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fine. All right. Um, you you calm down now? Are you calm now? <laughs> I think I'm calm. Our dragon has been around since only forever. Uh, th this this seems like something you would like read in uh, a loading screen in an RPG. 
Uh, the Earth Dragons have been around since seemingly forever, though only started to rise in power when the volcano became active. Their power is seemingly tied to, to the volcano itself, and are none too... <laughs> It needs to have an extra O. How will you borrow an O from this extra two? Happy about the Ember Scales ritualistic eruptions. So Holy shit, it's a Reddit post. <laughs> <laughs> god damn it, Nips. <laughs> oh my god, that's just Reddit every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. Basalt Boulder Dragon Grade 2. Okay, uh, I almost want Arm Dragon stuff where it's like Arm Dragon Grade 1, Arm Dragon Grade 2. Although it doesn't go off the tongue with the way it level does. Uh, act on Rear Circle. If your volcano did not erupt this turn, uh, easy, just wait for this first. Um, Soul Blast when to retire another rear guard, and this unit gets 5,000 power until end of turn for every three pressure. And if your vanguard's nerf dragon, draw a card. Okay. Builds okay. a pressure. <laughs> uh, it net zeroes to build a pressure and get power. That's fine. Um, continuous on a uh, rear circle, guardian circle. It gets 2,000 power and 5,000 shield for every three pressure in your volcano. So, and it gets reminder text on what that means if you built more pressure. Um, as, and it's as a grade one, so you can't intercept with it, so you have to keep it in the hand if you want to guard with it. That's cool. Um, all right, fine. I can, I can dig that, right? They, you see, the, I actually, I like these rock dragons more because they actually feel like they have a more dedicated idea of, it's like DI. You build something and you sit on it and you scale with it. Uh, okay. But you cannot even persona right, smile. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Using, you <laughs> <laughs> but how am I supposed to air up for 12 cards, man? <laughs> you don't! <laughs> uh, when this- you, you know how you Persona Ride? You Persona Ride by riding another Earth Dragon. Uh, Woo! okay, so... When this unit is placed on Rear Circle, Counter Blast 1, look at 7 cards to the top of your deck. Reveal an Earth Dragon or Volcano card from among them, put in your hand and shuffle your deck. Powerful Searcher. Okay. okay. Uh, but it's for a volcano card specifically or earth dragon, but um, wait hold on a second. Let me let me read ride line real quick uh, So um, This is ride line wrote upon by a grade three. It doesn't care what grade three. Aha. Aha That's how it is. Mm. All right, so you can still uh, so this I cannot wait to play that in my overlord deck but, Wait <laughs> Right and get volcano a volcano overlord magma overlord. This is gonna be the the, the, the peak of the meta uh, l let me let me mm -hmm. read something else then, um, because I think I remember something. This card cannot be played from your hand. So why are you adding a volcano to your hand, Buckaroo? I don't fucking know. <laughs> As a matter of fact, why are you playing multiple volcanoes? You don't have a road upon to get the thing. You fetch it when you ride, so you will always see it. Like, uh, hmm. okay. Uh, I don't fucking know. <laughs> that's weird, bro. Okay, I'm just nitpicking too much. Um, but anyway, add Earth Dragon Volcano card. I guess any plus is a plus, so even though you probably don't want multiple of these anyway, and this one will already be set by the time, so... Uh, Kindling Brood. Uh, continues in the deck. When you search your deck for a Volcano card, other than Ember Scale Peak, you may search this, this card instead. Oh. There's the answer to my effing question. <laughs> Great. Uh, when this... Wait... Oh, you're an insect. You're not an earth dragon. That's why. Because uh, why not have... Because what two things go together better than insect and earth dragons, right? Uh, Volcanoes. When... <laughs> <laughs> Volcanoes. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, so when this unit is retired for your card's cost, if your vanguard is an earth dragon, put this unit to your soul and draw a card. What? That's pretty strong, but I don't know if that's appropriate. I feel mm. like it should be CB one and put this card in your soul and draw a card, or you know, bite itself and draw. Wait a minute, no, <laughs> no, 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 you don't do that. You build pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, CB one, uh, CB one, and put it to soul to draw. It's pretty fair. That, that's fair. <laughs> Uh, cause I don't see too much CV from you right now. You can, you can, you can oh. come on. Uh, okay. No, 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 hold up. I have a better idea. Make it remove itself from game for the dragon sessions. What? 
Yeah, Dragon Sass in meta tier zero. Let's go. Uh, okay, okay, enough meme on that guy. I think he's already dead inside from us. Um, play this with cost soul blast one and remove one pressure for volcano. Yay! Something to do with pressure. Um, put two cards to the top of your deck into your drop. Then call up to one insect or earth dragon from your drop to river circle. The perfect unity between the two perfect traits. If the size of your eruption this turn was six or greater, <gasps> call to two cards instead of one. Yeah, so that's for the insects, um, because we Earth Dragons, we don't do that. We we focus on slow and steady wins the rest. Um, oh, okay. Oh yeah, sure. Sure, it's not like there's a bunch of cards that make your Earth Dragons into an insect or anything. No, that doesn't exist, my guy. No, not, not at all, <laughs> right? <laughs> also, um, one thing that's trippy, uh, this is a volcano, so I guess this is what he meant by adding volcanoes. Um, so this is a volcano that removes pressure from another volcano. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a, we fight oh fire god. with fire. Oh god, the volcanoes, they're attacking again. <laughs> oh no, the clash conquered. of gods. The volcanoes will like, burn the earth and, and mold it into their hands with the red hot Dude. magma. Dude, they've conquered Wall Maria, bro. Fuck! Oh no! <laughs> Shagashina has fallen because of Verno rumbling. It's the rumbling! <laughs> no, it's actually the slowdown. The heaviness. The heaviness, bro. <laughs> Shinosuke! <laughs> Shinosuke! Uh, Temperate Trail. Dude, it's a great three blitz order. Ah, we evolved through the blitz orders. Um, flavor text. Uh, play this with counterblast one and remove it to three pressure for volcano. Nice. Choose one of your opponent's vanguards, and that unit gets power minus ten thousand power until end of that battle. Good. For each pressure removed for this cost, if three or if three pressure was removed for this cost, and your vanguard is an earth dragon, choose one of your opponent's greater oh. or greater rearguards retire. No. <laughs> No. Why? God, it was so what good, and then suddenly denial, Griffin. Oh God! Oh, oh. joy. <laughs> but Josh, it's not a denial, Griffin, because it costs one extra soul blast. It's totally different now. <laughs> what? What soul blast? It costs a counter blast. That's a counter blast uh, and three pressure. Oh, so I misread that. <laughs> <laughs> So, it's now Griffin is slightly more cost, but you know what Denial Griffin didn't do? It also didn't get to potentially shield for an extra 30,000 power for that battle. Mm. <laughs> That's trippy. Uh -huh. uh, like, okay? Uh, it's like, and you'd be like, oh, but, but, but God's man, you're, you're an idiot because you could just play around this with the great one or lower hackers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you tried doing that and report back to me how that worked, buddy. Um, okay, so I'm gonna play oh, Great Ones in Bastion now. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> uh, that new owl will be like. Um, that you that owl counts as Great Tree <laughs> on regard, so it doesn't oh, even Brian, it, it can't it, 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 it can't deny denial, Griffin. Uh, warming <laughs> scales. Play this if you have an insect unit. Put this card or one card from your bind zone into your soul. Why? Uh, why? Okay. Why? 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 Why this part? No, just, just, just leave it. Put this card. But that's it. It, it. it was simple. You had one job. If you have a winged priestess, sneak. Why the winged priestess? That was just a random. <laughs> let, let me look at this priestess again, because I remember she was a revival card. Was she a vanguard? I just didn't realize it. No, she's a great one, normal unit with a rear guard. Why the Nikki? <laughs> oh god, everything these insects are about is just random crap. I was enjoying this until we got to the Dragon Empire section. Let me tell you that. <laughs> okay, if you have a Nikki, do both instead. If you have four or more face down cards in your damage zone, well, why the limit break? Choose a card for a minute and break. heal it. No! This is so random. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> what the, what the fuck, fuck is this? this? My guy, oh. you need to chill. <laughs> you need to chill. What? Who asked for? Who hurt you? Who asked for this and who hurt you? Let God, uh, tell me. He was so cooking with the Stoicaia one twos. So I know he's good. He's made a lot of good cards here. But these are just like, like okay, okay. Here's the thing. I 
actually think the earth dragon stuff here is fine the earth dragons seem kind of concise and they have a good theme to them i like it i like the fact that they're the counter movement to the big eruptions go erupt right they don't <laughs> like big government yeah. they want small government but the it's the insects <laughs> it's the insects the insects are the problem everything they touch turns to dust they're bad bro they they're a to bad dust. Ugh. They turn into your grandma's ashes. You know that? God, okay, that's a bit much, man. Hold up. Uh, okay, I've realized character space now. I can give a quick summary about the Ember Scales. Um, lore. Um, lore. Lore. Uh, lore. Anyway, that's it. Lore. You can keep going. Yes, indeed. Um, probably my weirdest idea for writing. Oh god, we didn't it's even. Three beetle siblings. <laughs> Piloting a mantis okay. robot cyborg thing. What the frick? Okay. 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 If the Beatles Wait, become set there. orders that allow you your Vanguard to assume a different stance each turn. I'm still listening. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. It also We're back to stoic chaos. I'm solid. I think this idea okay, has some okay. legs. Uh, so it's like Voltron almost. Okay. Form <clears> arms <throat> and legs, and I'll form the head. I'll give you the head, Josh. Wait. <laughs> What? Uh, stance beetle <laughs> calm. Okay. Uh, when rolled upon. Okay, so it's starter skill. I don't even know why I even begin those sentences anymore. Continuous in the order zone. Right, 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 right. I, I, I would have freaked out a lot harder if we didn't actually read beforehand. We're good card players. Uh, while this card is in your order zone, this card becomes a set order with a stance subtype, and its stance is balanced. Auto okay. in the order zone. When your Vanguard <laughs> assumes a balanced stance, Raw card. Okay. So I'm gonna have to assume that the other ones are, are either based on speed and strength. Mm. Speed or strength. Let's see what <clears throat> let's see how how uh, accurate that is. Stance beetle slash, probably the strength one then. If I have to wait a second longer to get going, I'm gonna nut. <laughs> I'm gonna um, come! I'm gonna <laughs> nut! <laughs> God, we should not be doing YouTube. Uh auto, <laughs> with this unit's this not for kids. <laughs> It's not for kids. <laughs> um, yeah, every time they have that little option down when I'm uploading a video, it says, Is this video meant for kids? I, I don't even know why they ask me that anymore, bro. It's never going to be you for see, kids. You see that guy named Assault Rider 555 there? Yeah, that's your answer right there. God, it, I wouldn't even have said yes without you. I'm not going to lie. I never have said yes to that. Not one video have I said yes to that. <laughs> when, I haven't even said yes to that to the freaking music videos I uploaded. I still said no. <laughs> when this unit is placed on Van Circle, reveal a card with Stance Beetle and its card name from your Bride deck. This unit can attack even on your first turn, and if you went second, Soul Charge one. <laughs> I play Quick Attack. <laughs> Auto. So continue with the Order Zone. While you while in your Order Zone, this card becomes a set order with a Stance subtype of Aggressive. Yeah. That is aggressive. Um, that's okay. Okay, so here's the thing. This is kind of BS, unless you discard a card. If you discard a card, then this is fine because otherwise you get to do a free extra drive, which normally shouldn't be provided to you. Hmm. Yeah. Add a discard, and this is cool. Uh, but, oh god, that is funny. You basically play quick attack on a card. That is aggressive. I will, I will give him credit for that. Um, so, auto on the order zone. What's for turn? At the end of the battle that your Vanguard attacked, if your Vanguard has an aggressive stance, counter blast one. Choose one of your units on VC. Stand that unit against drive minus one to under turn. Ooh. Uh, but I guess it only... So you have to pick a stance, right? Uh, but... Well, hold on a second. If it's balanced, it draw a card. But why would you choose to draw a card when you can just get an extra card for free, but it's a drive check and an extra attack? Hmm, that's looking a little sus. Um, Stance Beetle Flight. When the, when wrote upon by Quisali, you soul charge one, then you may put up to one card without Stance Beetle and its card name from your soul to your hand. Another plus one for free. Um... Yeah, that's two of them now, potentially. I don't know. That seems a little bit much. Uh, not not for free, anyway. Youth Break is a, is a plus two, but it's a Counter Blast and Soul Blast, respectively. Uh, while in your order zone, this becomes a set order, but the Evasion Stance. Okay, that's a cool idea. 
Uh, at the end of the battle, your vanguard attacked or was attacked. If your vanguard has an evasive stance, counterblast when a return of rearguard to your hand. Choose two of your rearguards and those unit gets 5,000 power, 5,000 shield until your next turn. Ah! Interesting. Okay. I like that. I like that. Um, so you can essentially have, uh, huh. Yeah, that works. That works just fine. Uh, whew. Quisily Prototype. It's a great three. Um, okay, so here we've got uh, Flavor Text. That's pretty awesome. Um, Auto on the Vancid Goal. When this unit is placed on VC, put all uh, put all cards with stance speed on their card names from your soul into your order zone. Then if you have three or more stance set orders in your order zone, draw a card. Uh, okay. Uh, but it's only when placed on VC. And you're only really going to be able to achieve that once, it seems like. Cool. Uh... At the beginning of your main phase, choose a set order in your order zone with a different stance than this unit's current stance and it assumes that stance. When it assumes a new stance, it drops any current stance it currently has. So a stance is forever then. You will always maintain a stance until you switch stances. Okay, I gotcha. Um, this unit gains the blow effect according to its current stance. During your turn, this unit gets 10,000 power. Balance means that each of your units get 3,000 power. And if the first four cards you call each turn get shield plus 5,000 power until... Ooh... Ooh, that's a lot of shield, man. But I get okay, so I get why. So balance is meant for each of the units to get an extra that, and that that is during the opponent's turn. So you can get a defensive there if you wanted to take it that way. Um, whereas this is ah, so that's why you do it like that. You could go for slash, but if you go for slash, you're gonna be vulnerable. If you go for balanced, you could uh, get some card advantage and stuff. Balanced still feels a little bit underpowered by comparison, but I can see a case for balance depending on the matchup you're playing against. If you're playing against pokey decks, you want to go for balance. But evasion is just full on shield tanky style, which is cool, cool. All right, that's nice. Uh, a gregarious beetle acto. The end of battle, this unit attack to vanguard. If this stance is aggressive or balanced, retire this unit and draw a card. Hmm, okay. Uh, drop when Quisily is attacked. You can bind this unit to get 5,000 power for that battle. So you kind of get to have an extra guard there. Huh, okay, that's that's also nice. Uh, that seems fairly well balanced. <laughs> Pun intended. Uh, Scarabee Cousin Ito. <laughs> right, because they're like siblings, so this is an, an cousin. I don't like talking about Beetle. Uh, act rearguard once per turn. Uh, Rest up to three set orders of different grades in your order zone. This unit gets power plus 2,000 until end of turn for each card rested for its cost. If your vanguard stance is aggressive, 5,000 instead of 2,000. Um, hmm. Okay. Back row center. At the end of the battle, this unit boosted. If your vanguard is quickly, soul blast one, bind this unit, and you may counter charge one. Ah, okay. Neck one, and you also soul blast, but you can get the counter charge for it that's cool that's cool and you bind okay all right looking good uh mound builder beetle nilu act in the drop if your stance is balanced or evasive carablast one and call this card and up to one dung <laughs> dung beetle and it's named for your drop to separate open rear circles uh if it's balanced or evasive you can do that and whew, but it's a drop ah but crap for one cb that's that's too easy though uh, 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 uh. no i feel like you gotta it'd be cool if um it brought itself back right but then it had a clause to bind itself after or maybe I mean, you could just keep bringing itself back kind of like how um maybe uh it, yeah, we could change it this way right if your vanguard's stance changes to balanced or evasive you counter blast one to you counter blast one to revive it from the drop. So it's kind of like how combine rusher is, uh, and then this other effect is the thing that makes it cool. Is evasive, it gets boosted and can't be chosen by cards effects. This, this is a really nice effect. It really feels flavorful with the evasive bit, and I really like flavor. Um, so Telu, rolling, uh, rolling. <clears throat> Sorry, losing my voice. I need a sip of water. At the end of the battle, this unit boosted. If your vanguard stance is balanced or evasive, counterblast one and draw a card. 
then if your vanguard's current stance is evasive switch deck from one card was so in his card name reveal put your hands over like again with like too much advantage for just being in a particular stance i don't know about that one but i i i, I mean i guess you could say that it means you're not getting the aggressive power of it or whatever so you're going more on the defense so maybe you can argue that because you don't get the vanguard restand um mm, but still it's kind of powerful uh and so it's only if you're evasive but then you could just be a super tank kind of deck couldn't you the, the fact that you could then just easily switch stances into aggressive anyway so you just build up advantage and then go into aggressive like it's cool for flavor but it also just seems like too convenient for battlefield practices right um so stance automaton dung one. Oh, i get it they're gonna be like a series of dunks huh um if your vanguard assumed a stance this turn it gets five thousand for each of your vanguard's current stances Wait, what? Current stances? But don't you switch it to a new stance? That's weird. Uh, so I guess it would just be one. Um, if your vanguard continues, if your vanguard assumes stances, turn gets five thousand reach. So it's the same thing, and they're just dung one, dung two. But I think your vanguard only gets one stance, right? I mean, that's how it should be, because otherwise, um, at the beginning of your main phase with a different stance and assumes that stance new it drops any current stance it has so yeah it would only ever be one so that's weird uh anyway so uh so grade two normal order um play this if you have the stance butyl or crystalline as card name right so it's a great choice i guess it means that it would work for your grade two and right line draw two cards and put a card from your hand in your soul um yeah so it kind of reminds me of the minerva thing a little bit with that order so you're getting rid of an order from hand and you're also putting a card to soul but you're drawing two so it's, it's a break even that's fine um act in the drop once per flight uh, once per fight i mean Ooh. okay uh if it's quickly prototyping your opponent's vanguard is great great to remove this card your opponent drops all of its current stances then your vanguard assumes the stance of each card in your order zone until the end until your next turn hmm at the beginning of your next main phase heal your vanguard three damage whoa that that is interesting so that means you can because you get all the stances so that means you get the aggressive bit but you also get the balance power bit and then you could potentially take out the opponent's turn so if you're at two you could just be a god for you know one turn and one opponent's turn and then just go to five whoa that's a sick card. Oh, that's metal as hell. Riding a new Vanguard will not prevent the damage. Good, good. Dude, that's sick. Uh, okay. Um, oh, and this is Mosquito Girl stuff. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, my cohort is not back yet, so I'm gonna have to solo review this part. And I gotta say, this is neat. This is really well made. Like, there, it's, I, I gotta test this to see if it feels like too much if the stance changing makes it to where you kind of get to have your cake and eat it too but the concept is so amazing feeling it reminds me of what super quantums was uh for Yu-Gi-Oh, right you have the uh red layer blue layer and green layer and they come together to become a uh, magnum or magnus or whatever like great magnus was the name of that big mecha exceeds and while in that case you had all the effects and stuff and it would accumulate but this one you have to switch between the three main forms so it's i guess it would be more adequate to say that your vanguard kind of becomes one of the three smaller xc's right they had the blue xc's the red xc's and the green xc's um but you can be big magnus for just a little bit you can be big magnus but if you want to be big magnus then you've got to deal with getting pwned for three damage just boom 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 three pings is big and yes i meant to say pwned the first time lol uh that's crazy though Ooh. hmm i wonder like i i, I wonder how this would play in the field of battle but it feels cool it feels neat i i i want to play this this I, it, it feels like it feels mecha it feels epic it feels interesting 
Uh, and I think I want to play this just to see which stance I would end up going with most of the time, right? Like, which one is the best stance? I, people comment down the below. This is my question to you. Which stance is the best stance? Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, I was right. So aggressive, balanced, and evasive. Yay! Yeah, yeah, that's what <laughs> it ended up being. Um, yeah, I'm moving on to the next thing, but so, but, so you, you were just in time to miss all of that, Naps, but... Freaking, no, it's okay. You can give. You can, we can get the rundown after the recording because I do want to get through this. But man, you're in time for this mosquito girl thing. Sweet little mosquito girl that may just suck your soul. Woohoo! Uh, hey, woo. Oh, that's a uh, that big blob of covered text is a quick rough draft for a story. It needs like six revisions. Understood. We'll move on. Wait, hold on. Scroll up a bit. I like how the uh, the dragon tree mark goes like, oh, it gets all of the other scale. But they bothered writing the starter skill. That is hilarious, my guy. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I guess this man has moose swings too. I can, I can respect it. Um, early morning appetite, Sakuba. Um, and so Sakuba ride line. They're all going to be Sakubas because this is a uh, mosquito lady. Um, so when rode upon by the Great Two Sakuba, you soul charge one, and you your opponent gets an Ecor Eater Pamphlet Crest. You give your opponent a crest. Ooh, wow. Well, um, you see, I can play Brownout to uh, negate the crests. Uh, continues in the soul. When this card would soul blast would be soul blaster with the cost of Sakuba Vanguard's ability, it can be regarded as two cards. Okay, that's cool. Um. So, the feasting on Ikor Sakuba, the Great Two of the Ride Line, when it's placed by riding from the Great One, call a card from your hand to rear circle, then retire rear guard and it gets drive plus one to unacharm. Oh, okay. So, you get rid of one of your units uh, to get a drive. It's remarkably like how Blaster Dark is. I'm fine with that. Uh, when rode upon by a unit with Sakuba and its card name, call this card from your soul to rear circle. That's also fine. <laughs> Uh, auto on the mm. rear circle. Oh god, it's got a rear circle effect. This might make or break it. Um, when this unit attacks, oh, god. Hits, so, when it hits, soul charge one. And if your vanguard is Sakuba and its card name, your opponent chooses one card from the soul and puts that card in the drop zone. Hmm. Uh, but it's on, a, uh, on, a, on, a, on an on hit for a card that doesn't get any power. That doesn't seem that bad, but it seems a little excessive to give it even that much when it already calls itself to rear from the soul. But then again. And then again, when we have Blaster Dark, right? And Blaster Dark has like this retire, and then it also has power, and it could even get more there. But I mean, that's because the entire deck places importance on Blaster Dark, right? Because of PBO. So maybe that's not even an apt comparison. Uh, eh, it might be a little bit much, but it's not too much. But of course, the elephant in the room is that you're removing cards from the opponent's soul. That's crazy. Uh, Talent Transfusion Sakuba. <laughs> that's 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 clever. Uh, act on advanced circle once per turn. You counter blast when retire rear. Call up to two units from your hand to rear circle. Those unit gets all the abilities of the rear guard retire for this cost until the end of your opponent's next turn. Ah, okay. So you literally sucked everything about them. That's um not sexual. Uh, auto on advanced circle once per turn. When this unit attacks or is attacked, you soul blast one or more cards. This unit gets 5,000 power for that battle for each card soul blast for this cost. Then activate the effect below to the number of cards soul blast for this card. If you soul blast two or more, you draw a card. Ooh, as a defensive card, that's a bit much. Uh, four or more, your opponent puts a card from their soul to their drop. Ooh, that's also mean. Um, six or more, this unit gets drive plus one for that battle. Hmm. Um, uh, this actually comes down to how easily you'd be building soul. Um, I think in his synopsis, he said this was the, the uh, Dark State's bright line, right? Um, I'm pretty sure it's the Dark States one. Uh, that's mm. that's trippy. Wouldn't the uh, is it actually? Is it not Stoikea? No, Stoikea was the first ones we saw. They actually brought up that it was Stoikea. Let me scroll up a lot of bit here just to see his synopsis. Okay, so we're almost to the top when he's talking. He did it. so. He did one for every nation, then, right? Yeah. So Dark States Tarantula. The so Brankgate was the Mecha ones. Um, Waspy. Oh, the Mosquito's a lyrical card. Ah, Talent Transfusion. Got it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Okay, the, now it's even more, um, it's even more clever of a name. That's cool. Oh, Insect Lady from Lyrical. Mmm, she just gonna keep sucking. <laughs> <laughs> Truly expert commentary from Naps here. Uh, okay, so... 
Uh, let's look on the crests. So your opponent may only write oh, yeah. cards with Sukuba in their card name. Oh yeah. So um, uh, just to clarify, when I say sucking, it means that she sucks. Di All right, <laughs> bad. <Thanks. laughs> Gets bad <laughs> immediately. No remorse. Uh, drive off to be honest. Uh, your opponent may only write cards with Sukuba in their card names. Okay, so it's since it's a crest and the opponent owns this, it's from their perspective. So that means that the Sukuba player can only write Sukubas. Fine. Uh, continuous during your opponent's turn, which means during your the player turn, mm -hmm. you have zero cards in your soul. Your opponent's vanguard gets a critical plus one. Ah, ah. So uh, that's one of the reasons why you don't want to be sucked dry of your soul, other than the fact that you can't pay for stuff. Um, at the end of your opponent's turn, if your soul has one or less cards, put two grade zero cards from your drop or bind into your soul. Ow! So you get to so it's like a blood bank for the opponent. They can still keep on building up a little bit soul, but then you also suck them dry to get their effects going. It's a cyclical thing. Huh. All right, mm. that's cool. I, I I love fattening up a cow just to eat it whole. Uh, I love uh, I love hearing you talk about sucking someone dry. Uh, Don drawn to the reservoir. Cucks in the reservoir. It's a mermaid. Okay, that's lyrical. Uh, auto and rear circle. When this unit's attack does not hit, if you have a Sakuba van, um, Soul Blast Moon retire this unit to put up to one grade two or less card from your drop into your soul. Uh, oh, okay. Um, that's that. That's cool. I guess you can. But what would be the importance of putting a particular card in your soul? Am I am I forgetting something? Am I? Wait, forgetting what? We're getting what? Uh, this card, but a particular like you could put a greater or less card for your drop into your soul if you don't hit. Yeah. I'm forgetting what the point of that is though. Uh, the card that calls itself uh from soul. But that's when Rotom. Mm -hmm. Let's see when this unit attacks. Uh, this unit called it to catch me. She didn't get retired for this cost. This unit attacks or attacks soul blast one or more cards. This unit get. Ah, oh, there you go. Uh, for each card soul blasted. Wait, hold on. Then activate each will according to the number of cards so best for this cost. Uh, let's go down. Let's continue first. There might be something yeah, down there. Okay. Uh, oh, there you go. Oh, uh, when you play an order, this card. Uh, okay. uh, the, the next card, I mean. The next uh, card is it. Uh, okay, let me read. Um, if the order played has Sakuba Scarlet Miss Parade. Um, okay. Counter Blast 1, return that order card to your hand, and the number of orders you play becomes 2. So you just get to play the Miss Parade twice. Um, okay. we'll get down to that later, I guess. Uh, continuous on rear and guardian circle. If your opponent has two or less cards in their soul and you have a Vanguard Sakuba, it gets 5,000 power and 5,000 shield. Fine, that's good. Um, when you soul blast this card, that's where it is. There you go. Um, <laughs> if you have a Sakuba, you call this card to an open rear circle stand. Wow, that's crazy, but um, okay, considering that you retired the other girl just to enable this, that's actually Ow. fair. Um, until end of turn, when a card would be put in your soul, it is put in your drop instead. Yes, you put something from your drop into your drop. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you for the clarification, because that's what I was thinking too. Uh, Can I just say put it on the bottom of the deck, yo? <laughs> well, no, because what if you put it um from like other locations, right? Like hand or deck or something, then it just goes immediately to drop anyway. So, all right. Yeah, uh, so the more reason I think it should says put it on the bottom of the deck instead. Well, I mean, yeah, but then you get recycle <laughs> power, right? Because what if you can put other cards from drop into soul? You think put them into the bottom of the deck so you can put back triggers that way. Sure. I mean, it's not like the deck shuffles anyway. Or does it? Does it actually? Did I miss a card? Uh, I don't think anything shuffles the deck yet, but we haven't seen all the cards yet, so let's see. Um, when this unit's placed on rear circle, it gets three for each card. Okay. When this unit is placed on rear circle, this unit gets power plus 3,000 until end of turn. For each card in your soul greater than your opponent's soul. So, for each soul you have more, you get 3k power. Gotcha. Uh, and it's just for that turn. Sasha Taste, Nuria. If you have uh, more cards in your soul than your opponent, this unit gets plus 2,000. When it's placed on rear, is retired. Okay. For the cost of your Sakuba, and she does retire, put it into soul. Soul charge, and you do not counter charge, you may counter charge one. Ooh. Um, that's a little, a little easy. Yeah, I don't know. That's a little uh, easy. Um, mm. Okay. A lot of stuff. This unit can be retired for your other cards or by your opponent's card effects. So you soul blast four or more cards for the cost of your Vanguard's ability to retire this unit and draw a card. All right. Uh, during your turn, okay. your opponent's card is put in your soul. If they drop, it gets 5,000 to end of turn. Auto rear. When this unit boosts a Vanguard Sakuba, if you have one or less... 
your opponent has one or less cards in their souls. Counter blast one and deal and damage dealt for that battle is dealt face down. Oh. Wait, wow. does that mean they can't use trigger effects? Uh, no, no, no. It's just um no, it just means that when it goes into the damage zone, it's turned face down, so okay, they good. have no counter blast. That that that's cool. <laughs> I, I can I can dig that. You give up one of yours to give up one of theirs. If you have more cards in your soul than the opponent, this unit gets plus two thousand power, auto once per turn. Cool. When mm -hmm. the unit is retired uh, for your card's cost, if you know you have Siku, but put two cards to the top of your deck in the drop. Choose up to one grade two or greater card from your drop and put it in your soul. Cool. <laughs> okay. Um okay, power. Miss Parade. This is the normal order that we saw before. Counterblast when retire rear. If you have a Sakuba in his card name, choose three of your units and they get 5,000 power in a turn. If your opponent has three or more cards in their soul, they choose a card from their soul and put it in their drop. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. eh, that's fine. Sure. You can use another way to bleed them dry. Uh, late night snack. Grade two. Um, play this with cost Soul Blast one. If you have a Vanguard with Sakuba or Felty Rosa. What the hell? That's trippy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your opponent puts up to one card from their soul into their drop, and if no card was put, your Vanguard gets 5,000 power and end of turn. Huh. Okay, so it's another bleed. Uh, wait. Alright. Wait, the the flavor text. Sometimes you'll meet a new friend doing what oh, you love. Mm, oh, sucking dick. <laughs> okay, but you know what? You this, is, this is a blitz order. So if they ran, if they have run out of soul, you can get a, a defensive 5k until end of turn. That's that's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. huh. You know mm -hmm. what? Felty can do uh, get it. Get it? Because, you know, vampires suck blood. Mosquitoes right. suck She's blood. A vampire. No, nice. Mosquitoes suck. Yeah. They're also good at sucking dick. <laughs> no, bro. Stop that. Next time, we'll bring along the B slash wasp. Hopefully, it won't be as long as all this was. Though, considering my backlog, let's say I'm at 30. Oh, God. Please, don't bring in that many cards. We want to we gotta, we wanna see God, some videos. We I want to be free. Bro, we didn't even give Ayako an actual video, if, uh, you know, a ball by himself. <laughs> even though we promised, right? We right? promised. Yeah, that kind of sucks, man. We got to get to that at some point. But anyway, yeah. so that was all your cards. This is an exception. This is an exception, all right? Don't you dare. How dare you? <laughs> Don't you dare. Can you please leave it to, like, 10 to 12 cards next time, man? You know, just, just, just a little bit. We don't need to see too many cards, right? Um, You know, we don't want to get too long because, you know, I, I want to literally, be done with custom card season sometime this century. Uh, <laughs> Literally made Josh review five nations at once. Amazing. God, I'm sweating, <laughs> too. I'm not sure if the camera is making that look apparent but god my throat is dry and my head is overheating i'm at my wits end so i'm glad it ended when it did but that said mm -hmm. these were pretty cool i think overall um there's some ups and there are some downs but one thing that has remained consistent for the most part aside from the we're gonna part insects uh was <laughs> the themes were nice i like the themes here and he definitely had a lot of stuff going on where it felt like these are cool deck ideas uh, the sucking blood stuff is integrated in a very well way. Uh, the highlight for me has to go to the Mecha Brankgate Beetles. Um, those are really neat, and I honestly want to try and test those out to see what stance is best, right? Again, comments. Let me know mm -hmm. what your opinions are on that. Uh, and Honestly. And, what's up? Honestly, I got to say, you know, I don't really like insects that much. But honestly, Wiley, you convinced me. Earth dragons are really cool insects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially when, you know, they're in their, uh, the place where all Earth Dragons belong. Volcanoes. Along with insects. God. <laughs> yeah, right? So, and then you scroll up even more, and I also like some of the other stuff here, right? So, going beyond the insects, this youth perk was pretty damn neat. I like this youth perk a lot. I thought mm -hmm. this youth perk was a really cool way to home in all together, because doing these custom cards... I've seen my fair share of, oh, this youth perk is all the revolt forms in one. It is the ultimate, right? Um, yeah, but, but this... none of them, none of them has come quite as, uh, you know, um, quite as nice or creative or, you know, well put together as this one. Yeah, this one is concise. It's not overpowered, but it's still just powerful enough to feel impactful. And it feels like it treats all three of the revolt forms equally and fairly. 
that's all you can ask for. It's very nice. And then also, I think the uh, the stuff that you did for Astro Unica is a, is a good highlight for me. I like both of these cards a lot. There's a couple of contentions with how uh, to shift this a little bit, just to make it a little bit more costed. But still, it's really there. And it's like 95% alt to a card that I would want to see printed now. And this is already a card I want to see printed now, straight up. <laughs> so yeah, lots of stuff to mm -hmm. love here. It was long as hell, but honestly, the ride, the ride was not that agonizing. This made for a really. That's nice what she said. Lamau, <laughs> does she also <laughs> suck naps? Tell me, do tell. Uh, uh, depends on whether or not she wears glasses. <laughs> bro, targeted. Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, so that, that's the end of the video. If you guys did like this video, oh, well, guess what? This is a whole last season. Lots of other episodes prior in this season to go check out, and I've got a playlist with it. So if you found this via playlist, you already know where the other ones are. So congrats. Go ahead and check them out. But if you are caught up to date and you want to see more, then do leave a subscribe and turn that notification bell for the next time that I upload one of these videos. Furthermore, I've got other kind of content content for vanguard stuff like tier list top tens yada yada the whole shebang right and with that said take care god bless see you next time